Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. I promise that I'd show everyone how I carve my little stamps. Firstly, these are some of my lino cuts. This was the one that I used for an image that I put into my book. But you can see I've cut them out. This one, it's a little hard to see, but that one is some lovely leaves that I've done. I love elephants, so there's an elephant one. That was just some random leaves. On the back, I did some simple gum nuts. This is a good way to start yourself off. If you actually go through and you do some little tests with your cutting tools and you'll get to see the different kinds of shapes and patterns by simply adding different pressures. If you do yourself a little sample board, it's a nice thing to go back to. Now you'll notice I've done shading on some of these. I think that was just an ink pad that I just blotted down. That can kind of help you see what it's going to end up looking like. Now I'll show you what I mean because the ink will go on those bits. Okay, now, so you can use simple lino prints, but if you want to actually create stamps for ink pads, you need these softer rubber ones. They are called smooth carve printing plates or soft carve printing plates. This is just one that I have. This is a piece that I've simply cut out of a bigger piece. I find that more economical, but you can even use, you know, those pencil erasers that you get? You can actually even use those. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the techniques. Now the carving tools, there's a number of different ones. You can get them like this where you have them, the little different carving shapes in the actual tool itself. I find them quite handy. This particular one is called a speed ball. And you can even get these from $2 shops. So this was just a pack that had all different shapes in it. Little narrow ones, little rounded ones. I think it's handy if you get yourself at least a little V one and a little round one because I find that I do use those the most. And I've got a couple of bigger ones just for bigger areas. These flatter ones are great to get out the backgrounds. So I might use those today just so that you can see them. What I'm going to do is, firstly, if you just see a picture, like that one's probably going to be pretty easy to trace. This one, you could trace around just the outside and then just trace around that inside piece and you'll get the idea of a bud. So you just want the outlines. That's all you're doing is tracing. Obviously you can make your own images, but I thought I'd show you this because you don't need to be an artist. Now, you can use tracing paper to go over it or just a lighter sheet of paper. Here we go. And I am literally going to trace around that edge. Now, if you actually, because when you're cutting, it's gonna be a thicker line. If when you're tracing, you use texture, so you'll find that you actually get something that's going to be closer to the thickness that you're cutting. So that's really rough. I think that that gives the impression of a flower. I might put the center in, why not? Now all I'm going to do to get that on my block is just what we did at school. And that is get a pencil, go over the back of that and then trace it onto my block. So just go over the lines you've already done. Easy peasy. So this is why these are great. And then I might decide on that center bit later. So let's just check. Oops. See, now that was quite heavy, but it still works. If it's a little bit unclear, just trace over on your block again. There we go. I might make that a bit stylized. And there we go. That's that flower. Naturally, you can also use the graphite paper that you find. And you can put your image on that so you could actually use a regular image you've already got and just trace around that straight through that will work even better but I find the pencil method just quick and easy now on this one you can do the outside or you can leave the centerpiece and in this case I'm going to carve away the background and leave the centerpiece 
and I'm going to cut that piece off too because I will use that later. So if you wanted to do a really simple stamp, you could literally just use a Stanley knife to cut around the outside. And that is one method, which is terrific. Or you can use your groovy little tools. Which one am I going to use? I think I'll use the bigger V. So you want to carve away from yourself. So you're carving around the outside of the line that you've just created. Uh, what are you better to do? You're better to do smaller cuts. Don't try and get it all off in one go. I have this board that has a ridge on the back so you can make this pretty easily, but I did buy it. And then that just helps have a purchase that you can cut away from, so that's quite handy. The other thing I find handy are these kind of tools that again, you can turn around and manipulate fairly well. So again, that just protects your hand. But obviously, well, so that you can see me, and I'm a bit more used to doing these, so that you can see me, I'll just do it the quick method. So I'm gonna go around the outside first, make sure I follow my own rule of not cutting into my finger. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like that's a valuable rule. Okay, I really did muck up that first line, but there you go, that happens sometimes. And that's fine, it just becomes a different sort of shape. It's very easy to draw straight on to the craft blocks as well. There we go, get rid of most of that background. There we go. Now, even though these are tiny, tiny bits, I actually keep them because they're sometimes quite cool. You can just do a little corner embellishment. They're oddly handy. I just keep them in a big box or bag somewhere. That's the main outline shape. Right, now I'm just going to add a few little lines and this will just add some of the flower features for us. Not necessary, you could actually stop here with just the outline because that can make a really cool stamp as well. But I thought I'd just do a few little extra bits and bobs. Go really lightly. You can get a very, very thin line the lighter you go. I think I've lost my flower shape on this one. <laughs> just doing some little lines into the flower itself. And now just going to have a look and see what that's looking like. Ah, I quite like that. It's going to look quite different to what I expected, but I don't mind the look. I can just see what edges I might need to clean up a little bit, like that one there. And like that one there. See how I went very close to my thumb then, so you really do have to be careful. Obviously, when I'm doing it to my finger, I'm not doing that hard. I think I do want a circle in the centre. So all I do for circles is just that. Just a little bit of pressure as I spin it around. So there you go. There's a bit of a loppy side of the flower, but it's off a natural one. So that is a bit cool. Now, I think I would have liked a little bit of a finer line in there, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to go with it. And now we shall see what it looks like. And there we go, there's a pink ink pad. Let's try that. See, it takes up the ink quite well. And there you've made your own stamp. And if you turn it, then you find that they can look quite effective. You could draw some stems and some leaves. Voila! You can like and subscribe below. And as always, keep creating. See you next time. Bye.